Hi, I'm Sally Snyder, and I'm standing in for Krista today. And we are um, going to go ahead and get started on our Encompass slide. And with me is Laura England Biggs from, oh, it's not three months, it's Keen Memorial Library. That's right. Oh, gosh, that was hard. In full, look, it's up there on the screen. Well, that makes it easier. One thing we can do for you to make things better is just put that guy in here. Oh, there we go. Because now we have things running. Of course, you probably want to see this other side. And then we have um, people muted from here, but if you want to ask a question using your microphone, just type into the question box, and I'm going to be monitoring that, so I'll see that you want to ask a question, and I'll tell Laura we have a question, and I'll unmute you for that, and then we will um, let you have your question and discussion. Otherwise, you can just type questions into the question box and at appropriate times during the presentation. If you don't mind being Absolutely. interrupted, I'll interrupt and say we have a question about what you just said, so it'll be more timely. But um, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Laura because she knows what she's talking about. Well, thank so, you, Sally. Yeah. Uh, I am Laura England Biggs. I'm with Keene Memorial Library, which is not in Keene but in Fremont, Nebraska. It's about 35 miles north and west of Omaha. Um, can everyone hear me okay? If not, I don't know how you'll let me know. Well, they could, um, let's see, if we click on that orange arrow to bring things back out. On that side there, up a little bit, there you go. Okay. And there's a place for people to raise their hands, I thought. There should be a place. Yeah. Where is that? Well, well we'll just keep going. Okay. The oh, microphone here is we go. pretty Hearing close. Hearing you nicely. Some oh, wonderful. Diane, type that in there. So, yay. Thank you for letting us makes know. feel better. Okay. We'll put that away. And we'll bring that back up. Perfect. So I'm talking about Picture Book City, which uh, I've presented before. It's how I used my ILS, or Integrated Library System, to reorganize our picture books by subjects. There's some technical stuff, and there's a lot of not technical stuff. So we'll get into the meat of it. I mentioned that we are a medium-sized public library in Fremont, Nebraska. Our service population is around 26,700. Our collection size when we started all of this was about 106,000 items with 10,000 picture books. And we use Circe Dynix Horizon for our ILS. We have since, gosh, I think the 90s before I worked at the library. My background uh, I came from a community college library where I was an administrative assistant. I started out as the assistant director, became the head of technical services and the Horizon Sys admin all in August of 2005. Graduated with my MLS from University of Missouri at Columbia in December 2006. I've been the interim director several times. People always ask, why don't you just apply for it? The answer is I don't want it. I enjoy my job, especially now that it involves being the youth services librarian as well as all of those other things. Oh my, that's a lot. That is a lot, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, good. So before Picture Book City, this is what our children's section looks like. All of our picture books were arranged by the author's last name. You had to wander the aisles. We have five sets of bookshelves that are two shelves high, then it graduates to four shelves high, and then back to two shelves high, and it wiggles around, and it was really kind of difficult to explain where things were. We had to do a lot of walking people to where the S's were, especially after we shifted. In January of 2016, we had what I call the hurricane director. She blew in January 4th, and there was a lot of storm, a lot of eye of the hurricane calm, and then a lot of storm, and she left on February 4th. Oh my. So 
While she was there, she had an idea for a favorites wall she had seen in another library. We had three stipulations. We had to do it in six months with no service disruption and get it right. Ooh. That gives you an idea of what the hurricane was like. So I hit the internet because I had never thought about doing anything like this. It was a, a new concept to me. During that hurricane, we discovered Picture Book City. Came from a very trusted resource. A lot of you out there in youth services land probably know Storytime Katie. She has her Flannel Friday. Um, she has storybook themes or storytime themes that she's put up on the internet. She had already done Picture Book City. She's in a, an urban library in Illinois. She's never named her library online, so I can't tell you where she's from. But the URL is on there, and I will share the slides with the commission so that they can post them for everyone. Great. Um, it's, it's really what I used to design the system we're using. We had to go through a lot of steps to create our picture book city. First, we had to define what categories we were going to use. Once we decided those, we needed a labeling system. How were we going to communicate the sections to people? So then I created a list of books in my item reporting function in Horizon, exported that to Excel and went through it and assigned categories to the books that I knew off the top of my head. Curious George goes in favorites. Uh, Pete the Cat goes in favorites. Thomas the Tank Engine goes in things that go. Things like that, where I knew specifically what I wanted to put things in. Then we pulled out those books. I would filter the report by each section, pull the books in those smaller sections, apply the labels, which was a time-consuming process. I think it took us almost 18 months to label everything. Oh, time. We didn't do it consistently every day, which is probably something I would change. Then we reshelved everything by author while we waited to finish. And finally, we did a massive reorganization of pull everything off the shelf, change the collection codes, put it back on the shelf in its smaller sections. So we're going to go through a little bit more detail on those. Katie had 10 neighborhoods in her picture book city. And as you can see from the lists here, concept neighborhood had several streets where she identified smaller sections within the concepts. Also growing up and nature, stories, we chose a different route. We did not go as far as making streets. Part of the reason for that was I didn't have enough colors on my labels. Because we chose to do both words and colors to designate our 13 neighborhoods. We have animals, bedtime, concepts, dinosaurs, favorites, feelings, Issues, which is kind of a catch-all for things about growing up, but it was shorter to put on a label. Nature, our world, rhymes, which also includes songs, but that didn't fit on the label. Sparkly, which covers princesses, pirates, and unicorns. Mm -hmm. Stories is the catch-all for where the heck does this go, and things that go. We ended up using, as I said, words and colors. The chart on the left is what's posted around our library and in the back room to help the shelvers remember what order things go in. We use the SP1 spine labels from OCLC that print 40 to a sheet on a laser printer and just do one letter per line for eight characters for each of the word labels. We've discovered that size 10 bold works best. 12 bold on the smaller, shorter words is even better, just for easier readability. And we worked with Demco 
for the color labels, they had 13 available in the size we use, which is a three quarter by one inch uh, color coding label. And I'd be happy to share specific part numbers with anyone who needs them. I didn't bring them with me. There are two greens on there, you'll notice, Concepts and Our World. They're pretty close in color, so I separated them by quite a bit in the physical plant when we reshelved. But we had to do that to get 13 categories. I could not figure out how to condense it into 12. So then we created the list in item report. All of our picture books were in what we called J.O. for oversized. Uh, so we just pulled up J.O. books, displayed barcode, title, author. And I think that's all we used to create the list because those were the only things I needed for people to be able to pull the books. And this is an example of what the spreadsheet looked like. I guess I did use the item status, but it wasn't terribly helpful. Oh, and call number. Yes, call number is good. Um, so on the very far right, I assigned categories using the 13 that we've already talked about and did the filtering to print out lists for people. Um, That process, we used volunteers to pull and label. I'll talk a little bit about why that was a bad idea later. Pulling is not a big problem. Labeling was a problem. Then we applied all the labels. Our choice was to put the color label just above the call number and the word label just above the color so that it says animals, Black Label, J-O, uh, Brett, J, for any Jan Brett animal books. Um, most of the time, they stayed pretty even across the books, depending on the placement of the call number label. It's a little iffy, but for the most part, you can follow it across the books. Then we reshelved the books which everybody said, why are we doing it this way? Why aren't we putting them where they belong? Well, because we haven't finished pulling everything in that section. It's really hard to say to people, well, this one's over here, but that one's over there. So we just went with leaving everything where it started. Our labeling was done. We started this all in 2016. We were done November 18th of 2018. So we closed on Sunday so that we could shift Picture Book City. We had Sonia, myself, Elisa, Dan, Sarah, and Dorlissa. So I think that's six, six or seven of us that worked together, moving, shifting, putting things in the computer, um, keeping things in order was the biggest challenge that day for everybody. But it also allowed us to do some shelf reading, which was nice. Good point. Um, so they started pulling the animal books, keeping them in order, gave the carts to Dorlissa and myself. We scanned them all into the computer, one card at a time, we have an item group editor that we can use in Horizon, so we weren't having to do book by book by book. That would be crazy. But my director thought that's what we were doing. Oh. So she wondered if we'd really finish in eight hours. Then we would give the cart back so they could start placing the books on the shelf in that order. The, the longest part was the pulling off the shelves in order on carts. Then we ran out of carts and places to store things that we were waiting to pull. We didn't. We used a lot of carts. Mm -hmm. We used every cart we had plus some stationary shelving that was movable. And then we just prayed <laughs> that we wouldn't need more. Uh, we did not finish on Sunday. 
we actually needed four hours on Monday. So whenever you're budgeting time, I always ad ad uh, advise add 50%. Because I, I estimated based on how far we had gotten that it would take us four hours. It took three hours and 45 minutes. Wow. Good estimate. So that was a good estimate. Um, this is what I was talking about before. I forgot I had this slide in there. We scanned everything in. We have the ability to make groups so we could do one shelf at a time, edit everything at once. The collection code in our system has a description line which allowed us to say animal picture books or bedtime picture books so that that's how it shows up in the pack in the, the online catalog so people know where to go on the shelf. We ended up having to double check every picture book that was returned for the next two months because there were a large number of picture books checked out. They're kind of our bread and butter. So we had to put them all on a wooden cart, check them to make sure they had gotten moved, and if they didn't, move them. Um, it was two, two and a half months before we said, okay, the wooden cart can go away. That got us through the majority of the, the circulation cycle. Um, there were 29 books that were in long lost status. I think 27 of those eventually came back. So wow. I count that as pretty lucky. That is great. So <laughs> drum roll, please. Da -da 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 -da. We are pleased to show you animals. Wow. Our collection code is J-O-A. We ended up with 13 collection codes now. Well, 14. Um, we kept the, the standard J-O for ordering, so my vendors don't have to do all the extra work. And we do the Picture Book City labeling in-house. It's our largest collection, Animals is, with at least 2,800 books. We've added to, some, to it since then. Um, but you can see kind of what I'm talking about where you have the colors going along in a semi-ordinary regular line. Then comes bedtime, which is a lovely blue shade. Um, we just had to move some books into bedtime that I discovered were in the wrong section. That was an interesting challenge. I'll explain that in a few more slides. I was going to ask you that if you made decisions to move things. So yes. I'd be interested to hear that. will be part of the tips and tricks. Perfect. Thanks. Concepts. We have about 450. I need to add some there, I'm discovering, because some of these are falling apart. They get so much use. So that was a good thing. We tried not to pay attention to condition as we put things into Picture Book City. I said, you know, we did that when we were inventorying. People started paying attention to the condition of the books, and that's not the purpose. Just get it where it needs to go. We'll catch it later when we shall free. Dinosaurs, 116. I thought I had more than that, as popular as dinosaurs are. So I'm going to be doing some looking for that section. Um, I know I've added at least 10 since this picture was taken. Favorites. Your mileage may vary, your collection may vary because of what your patrons consider their favorites. We have, as you can see, where's Waldo, Pink Valicious, Skippy John Jones. He has to be in there because he's Miss Laura's favorite. <laughs> um, Pete the Cat, Curious George. I can't remember who else is in there. Um, and I quite honestly have to look up from time to time to remember, did I put them in favorites or are they in animals? And there may be a time when we rotate somebody out if they don't circulate well there. I don't know yet. Whoops, I went too far. Feelings. I discovered I need more books on feelings to help kids deal with those. Only 107 is not enough. Um, so I've really been looking for books about that. 
and really looking more critically at where did I put that? Issues covers things like adoption, bedwetting, going to school, bullying, and I've also put a lot of my LGBTQIA in here because a lot of kids may be questioning and I didn't think it belonged in regular stories. I thought it was more of a life issue that people might need a little assistance with. So a lot of things they're trying to work through go in this section. I love this section because I love to take parents there to say, you want to work with your kid on bedwetting? I've got a book about that. That's great. And you can find it. Exactly. It's no longer one in the middle of 10,000 books. It's in the middle of 500. And I can find it a lot faster. Nature includes my science. Uh, my planets, anything about the seasons. Um, it seemed kind of to go hand in hand. It's a little confusing to people that science goes under nature, but I think it makes sense. Makes we sense have a me. question. Oh. oh, she was just good. Ah. Is this for fiction only? What about nonfiction is our question. At this time, it is fiction only. At some point, I do intend to go back to my nonfiction books and pull out some of the easier nonfiction that would possibly double as a picture book level reading um, and incorporate it into this. I don't intend to storybook or picture book city the whole nonfiction because I, I, I'm old school. I think that's what Dewey does for us. But yes, I do want to put some of the, the lower level nonfiction into this to expose kids to that level of, of book. So something like Clayton Anderson's A is for Astronaut that has the alphabet story in it in bigger type, but also in smaller type has some nonfiction information on each page could fit in, in the picture book city because of the design of the book. And also you can just read the story or you can read more of the nonfiction sections. Absolutely. Okay, thanks. Absolutely. A lot of the DK readers yeah. are good for, it's nonfiction, but it can cross over into this collection now that it's been broken into sections. So you could put it in the nature if it's the book on dolphins, say. Well, dolphins would go in animals. Oh, well, true. Anyway, I'd have to think long and hard about that one. Our world, I love this section. This section is also uh, an example of some bad practice for us. This section covers biographies, anything geographical, and anything historical. You can see in about the middle of the picture, the colored labels show up on top of the words. That's where I was talking about having volunteers do the labeling wasn't necessarily a good idea. We did not monitor them as well as we should have in the labeling process, and they got away from us and did not follow directions. I have a very particular way I want the label oriented. They put it the one inch side going tall, vertical. I like it the one inch going horizontal so that it saves more of my spine and I don't cover as much of the title. So note to self, monitor volunteers closer. Uh, rhymes and songs is myth, fairy tales, and things like the wheels on the bus because that's more of a song than anything. And I don't consider it a thing that goes. I consider it a song for the wheels on the bus. I don't know why. I just do. But a lot of Aesop's fables, um, the retelling of the three little pigs. I just relabeled six different varieties of the three little pigs. The three horrid pigs, the three javelinas, the three little alligators. All of these are retellings of the story and got put in the wrong sections. And then there's my sparkly. The pirates are offended by the light pink label, but the princesses and the unicorns love it. 
Well, they outvoted the pirates, I guess. That's right. And I have fewer pirate books than I thought I did. So, or then there's the princess and the pirate. Sometimes you have to make a decision. Uh, aliens go in stories. Monsters go in animals. When it's dinosaurs and aliens, does it go in stories for aliens or in dinosaurs? for aliens love dino pants. Interesting call. We went with the dinosaurs because the dinosaur was on the cover. Good call. Uh, stories, second largest collection, surprisingly. It's not the largest, uh, but it's where everything else goes. And I listen to my staff. I listen to my patrons. If they come up to me and say, I don't know why you put this here. It belongs in da da da. I will listen to them and I will say, you know what, you're right. I probably should have put it there. I wasn't familiar with the book. I didn't read it very well. And it's white, so it's a little hard to tell in the picture, but it's stories, white label, call lumber. And then there's my last things that go. Um, some of Thomas the Tank Engine snuck into favorites. Some of them are here. We're trying our best to move them into the things that go because that's where my kiddos go when they want their trains. But anything, planes, trains, automobiles, boats, anything you can drive. Horse and buggy. See how I'm causing you trouble. Oh, that's a tough call. I can't but think of a picture book that has a horse and buggy in it. Yeah, I would have to think long and hard on that one. That could be animals. It could be animals because of the horse. Yeah. Just trying to cause you trouble. Sorry. You are. <laughs> um, I pointed these out before. It's a bigger shot of the laminated signs. I had to use the actual stickers to create them because of some CMYK RGB conflict. That's designer speak for the color resolution between the screen and the printer. You can't create the exact color you want unless you just use the label. So I sat there making 13 of these and then we laminated them so they wouldn't get destroyed. They're used in our third grade tours so that Miss Sonia can say, okay, what if you wanted a book on? And she holds it up and asks them what color it would be. It's wonderful. So tips and tricks. Um, Weed, weed, weed before you begin and then clean what you keep because we often found that the covers were disgusting. Oh dear. And you don't like to apply labels over schmutz because you're keeping the schmutz forever. True. Uh, it's very important to have one person decide what goes where. The decision-making process is sometimes a little discombobulated up here, but most of the time I remembered why I was putting it where I wanted. I would have one person do the training on the labeling and watch them closely, make them show you before you turn them loose that they know what they're doing. Make sure you have that final plan for the shifting and understand that you will never have enough carts. I don't think anybody will own enough carts because you never need to move your entire collection at once until you do something like this. Definitely close to the public and allow that 50% more time. Uh, we worked for eight hours. We were supposed to take an hour long lunch. We took a half hour and everybody looked at each other and said, let's get back to it. We had two people scanning, four people shifting, and then somebody else came in and relieved somebody. It's hard work shifting. I really, I applaud those folks who did that work. That was Elisa and Sonia and Dan and Sarah and one other person who I can't remember now. Might have been Susan. Those folks did the hardest work ever. Up and down and on their knees. Their hands were sore. Their shoulders were sore. But they didn't complain. They just kept going. 
Uh, Mark Edit is your friend. If you're not a cataloger, you've never heard of it. It's a wonderful piece of freeware created by Terry Reese. It helps you edit the local call number in all of your MARC records. One thing to do is make sure you have a bib number or a match point that's consistent among your records because if you don't, once you make the edit to the call number to insert the wording if you go that route, so that instead of J-O subfield B Brett J, it's J-O animals subfield B Brett J, Sorry for the catalog speak. If you finish all of your inserting, which you can do in regular expressions, they tell me. I did it the hard way. When you re-import those mark records without a match point, it creates a duplicate record which has no items attached. Oh dear. And you have to go through by hand, title by title, through all of your collection to merge all of those bibs. This is a good thing to know ahead of time. It's a very good thing to know ahead of time because I literally touched all 9,800 and whatever records we had and Dorlissa helped me with about three, 400, but I did most of them myself because it was just busy work while I was on the desk and I could be interrupted and we just finished that. We started it in December of 2018 and finished it last week. So that's a lot of work. We used our item group editor function to update the call numbers in the item record. And as I said, we used it for the collection code. Um, we maintain that generic collection code for all of our EDI ordering. We label the product when it comes into the library. We don't make the vendors do that labeling for us. It would be too much to ask them to keep those labels in stock and do that much work. Plus, when I order, I don't always know where I'm going to put it. Well, you haven't read the book yet. I haven't read it yet, exactly. Uh, and check your statistical setup. We discovered too late that all of our picture books went into a generic J fiction collection for statistical purposes. So I can't tell you whether or not moving to Picture Book City has made any difference in my circulation. That's too bad. I can look at my JFIC statistics and I can tell you they did go up, but I can't attribute it to anything in particular. We have since moved everything to its own Picture Books uh, collection for statistical record keeping. So I can tell you from November 18 to November 19, I'll be able to tell you if there's an increase, but unfortunately, that historical statistics is just lost to me. That's a shame. It is. So. Well, speaking of that, and since it says questions, do you have... Um, parents and children making comments about the new arrangement. We do. Anecdotally, people have been giving us very positive feedback. They like not having to sort through all the shelves to find what they want. The, the mothers who are homeschool and just want books on nature and science really like knowing I go to purple and I can browse it even if I don't want to go to the catalog. Uh, the kids love going straight to things that go in that back corner. Um, overall, the reaction has been very positive. I would go right for animals every time yeah. if I were a five-year-old kid. If I had more colors, I would break animals down into dogs and cats and horses and rabbits but I didn't have any more colors. Limited by colors. Yes. So if you have questions for Laura, you can type them into the question section on the go to webinar um, little icons of things there and ask a question or you can type in there please unmute me and I will do that. It will take me longer but we can do it. We can. we can. We've actually decided to take some of Picture Book City and apply it 
to our first grade, second grade, third grade uh, readers. We're going to put colored labels on those to eat, help with sorting because they're so skinny on the shelf, yeah. the, the leveled readers, the early readers. So we're going to use um, striped labels with the stripes going horizontally so that they're not exactly the same as Picture Book City. I was just going to ask that. We Are found some circle labels that have the horizontal stripes, and then we can have red, blue, and green. And are those three sections already pulled out separately? Yes. So you don't have they are already separate. I've got about a thousand in grade one and two, and then grade three has about fourteen hundred. Are those sections used a lot? I can only guess heavily. They are. Yes. I just looked at grade one to try and weed it before we do this. Based on no checkout since May first of twenty sixteen. There were 16 books that I could weed out of almost a thousand. Wow. Well, that's not much at all. That's not much to weed, and it also tells me I need to add more to that section to refresh it. It's hard, though, because I've got my own chart. I don't know if you realize this, but every publisher uses a different system to number their leveled books. Yes, they do. Anyone who's ever tried. I have a chart, which I'm happy to share with anyone. I would love a copy of your chart. I would love to do that. And I've gone through and looked at it based on my own criteria. Is it a picture book? Is it grade one, grade two, grade three? Or does it go all the way up to our, what we call J fiction? Great. So I'm happy to share that. I think you're going to get some requests that. for that, because that would be very helpful. Um, oh, I have another question. It'll come back to me. Okay. Oh, um, I can only assume that your staff was behind this after you explained the idea because it sounds like they worked so hard to help get this all Absolutely. Um, rearranged. Absolutely. The, the head of circulation was a little skeptical because she thought it was going to be a little harder for the shelvers but she saw the practicality for the users and has come to see that it really is easier because it does break things down into smaller sections and you can sort by color. And within the section, section you were saying it's the blue, it has the name, word and then the color and then the... And then the call number. Call number. So, so it's still so alphabetical by author within each section. Oh, we have another question. Oh, yay. Could you put that publisher leveling chart with the slides and other presentation collateral? Absolutely. We can have that happen too. That's a great idea. Then anybody who's looking at the show can just download it and say thank you very much. I would be happy to do that. I'll email it when I get back. Thank you. Terrific. Now you, your library director now, because this all kind of got started with the hurricane, director, mm -hmm. and then you have a different director. Yes, we have a wonderful who, director. Who came in at what I assume is the middle of all of this being worked on and yes. being done, and her support, or she, is her? her. Right? Yeah. Tina Walker is yeah, our director. I'm sorry, I could not. She that. is super, super supportive. She's the one who helped us close for a day to get this done. She brought us lunch. She made sure that we had everything we needed. She has been uber supportive of all of the initiatives that we've taken up to try and make things better for the patrons. That's really her her strength is seeing that it's better for the patrons, it works well for us in youth services, it works for the shelvers, so. So now not, I'm going to make you backtrack a minute because okay. you were talking, this was first suggested to do a favorite. Mm -hmm. um, Shelf? That Just a favorites wall. Wall, wall. So this has actually made it so much, seems like much better organized for your users who come in and the kids who run for, for the things that go or the dinosaurs. Absolutely. It went beyond the favorites wall to really categorizing everything so that it wasn't just, here's the picture books. And here's Curious George and whatever the favorites are. And it really helps me when I'm ordering 
Because I think, do I need another animals book? Do I need another? No, I need more dinosaur books. What am I looking for in this catalog? Good point. And you have a much better idea of the topics you're looking for. And I really know my collection now. Oh, yes. I mean, uh, lots better. Here we go. Based on your experience, do you think this would scale up for larger collections? I know it does. When I was at Kosugi, which is the customers of Circe Dynex Users Group Incorporated um, conference back in March, there was another library that had done this. It was a 10 branch library, nine branches and a bookmobile. They did it using Circe Dynex Symphony, which is the sister software to Horizon. And I went to their presentation. They followed many of the same steps I did had some of the same pitfalls, but they were able to apply. Uh, they actually changed their whole call number label. So it would say concepts and then their call number underneath it. They did not use color coding, as I recall. So that made it so that you have to read the label to sort it. And then another question is, does your library float its J.O. collection? We do not. We're a single site. So we don't have that um, particular issue to deal with. That would be that would be intriguing if you had a branch somewhere and you were. It was whether everything went back to the starting point or if they could just stay yes. at the other place. I know they had several conversations about that during the other presentation I went to at Kosugi. Getting nine children's librarians to agree what this book would be and figuring out how to float their collections was a, a whole separate issue. I, I didn't honestly pay attention to that part of it because I don't do it. Just making sure there, if there are any more. I'm going to move on to the next okay. slide. So if you have questions, okay. there's my contact information. Thank you. If something comes up later. Now I'm going to ask, this isn't fair, but I can do this. So you just tell me how it is fair. <laughs> of everything you've told us this morning, what is your number one recommendation for someone considering this? <sighs> is there just one thing or are there like seven? Number one would be weed. Make sure that you go through your collection. We didn't, and I ended up weeding a lot of things that we took the time to label and put a label protector on, and just the, the time it took to decide where it would go in the first place. And then when I ran the weeding list, I discovered I didn't need to touch that book, and it would have saved me so much time. Good point. Cleaning books is probably the second. We didn't clean the first batch. I didn't have the same youth services assistant. Um, my first youth services assistant had to leave the library for health reasons. And my current assistant, Sonia, is, I won't say OCD, but if I did, she would understand. She likes the books clean and fresh and really takes good care of the collection that way. Great. Yeah. Um, we have a thank you, Laura. <laughs> You're welcome. And, and as you said, if anybody has questions after you, after we sign off here, and you just want to send a message to Laura, you can use her email there. We will also make sure that that's available. We'll have the slides so people Absolutely. can see it there. And um, I would also like to thank you. This has been very interesting. And I have to confess, I have not heard of Picture Book City. So where really? have I been? Well, I don't know. Favorite walls, I know about those and other things. But I'm really happy to have learned so much just today. Well, I'm glad to share. And I'm going to go look up some stuff now when I get back to my office. Very good. And we'd like to thank everybody who, who uh, signed up for today, who are here with us live. And also, of course, this will go into our archive, so you can come back later and check on it. Or for those who signed up but couldn't come for whatever reason, they can watch this at their convenience. So that's nice. And um, 
We have a, an Encompass Live every Wednesday, almost every Wednesday. Um, it starts at 10 o'clock Central Time. The only time we don't have one is when the Nebraska Library Association and Nebraska School Librarians Association this year were with Iowa. Iowa Library Association Conference happens because Wednesday is the pre-session day. Right. So we don't have a, an Encompass Live that day. Or if it falls on, like, I think the only date it could possibly fall on would be Christmas. Or July 4th. Or but July not this 4th. year. Yeah, not this year. So um, check our, our um, calendar on our Nebraska Library Commission webpage, and you can look and see what's coming up. And you can look through the archive, too, and see what's recently been recorded that you might be interested in. Thank you again, Laura, and I bet you you'll get a few more questions Wonderful. in the next week or so. Really appreciate you coming to Lincoln and spending some time with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everybody, and now we'll end the, the Encompass Live, and we'll see you next week. I have to I Bye, everybody. Anything. I can't see anything. I have to turn on the light. <laughs> then we can end the show. Oh, yes. That is much better. Oh, no,